mean, it is an official formula, but the abbreviations are not official. So it doesn't really matter which one you do? For this particular thing, no. As long as, you, as long as this is the first sample, this is the second sample, and that's the, okay, you're right with that. So even though it's a bit different than your booklet, it's still the same formula. Yes, Louisa. Why is it not 16 times 17? 16 times? Because remember, we did a whole lot of repeats, and we got an average, and the nana behind you reckon the average was 72. Oh, 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 average 72. Yeah. And oh, 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 average 71. 21. Mm -hmm. Do I not include the 16? 21. Do I not include? Do you include the 16? No, because that was sample one and it's not, you don't average sample one into this. You're only averaging sample two and your repeats of sample two. So, yes. Oh, okay, so you think there'd be six. Yes, because you did sample two and you repeated oh, okay. it four times, so there are five of these. Okay. This is a different figure. Okay. You're right. I'm yes, my Andrew. Table. How would you label the figure? Because okay. the 16 doesn't really relate to any of them. So, um, let me just see if I've got a table here for you. No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. So the table that I did somewhere um, would be no, stop, no? Yes, stop it, child. <laughs> Say again. <laughs> yeah, what should you be doing? I'm focusing, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so number in sample one, number in sample two, and so this was sixteen and or this maybe needs to be a column one, and then you've got your second sample, one, two, three, four, five, and you've got your repeats there. Okay, and your average at the bottom. So you say number in sample one for the 16. Yeah. What do you say for that middle one? This, quadrant number. Um, repeat number. Okay. Sample two, repeat. And then you say on the right, the number in sample. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right, anything reasonable like that. Okay, but okay, wait, is... now I'm confused again. So you still have two things for sample two. Do you have to now split that into two? I'm just, oh. Uh, because you have the, how many you've caught, then how many are marked. So then you have to put another column and say how many are marked. Oh, oh it's not. Oh, it's not much. Okay, thanks. I've got an intelligent child here. Now you still have one more block that's going to be empty. In the bottom left hand side. Not anymore. So you can't even like go to the the last one. Okay. How many were marked in sample two? Can you not just draw like a line that splits the sample two in half? Okay, there's there's variations on this. This is a difficult table to do. Okay, mm. yep, go. Mum, two questions. Yes. Why is there a one in the table if we're not counting sample one? Because it's the repeats of sample two. So, so what do you want to call them? A, A to F. Oh, so, would it, so your heading in what your subheading would be repeats of sample two, yes. and then you put one yes. to five? Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you, okay. Well, I see why it's confusing because you're saying, but I've just told you not to include sample one. It's not sample one, it's the point of sample two. Okay, right, we're happy, happy. Okay. Well, okay. So here is an example of a little butterfly, and you know that it's a butterfly because it doesn't have a feathered antenna. It's got a don't rock on my chair. It's got a clubbed antenna. So it's not a moth, it's a butterfly. And you can see a little marking under the wing there. Okay, so that's an example of a marking that you would use. So you need to understand stuff about the way in which this thing is marked. Okay. If you are doing it on fish in a dam, you do not borrow your sister's water paints 
and take a fish out and paint a one on the side and a two on the, you know, or whatever, paint a little cross. Because when you throw it back, the water paint is going to dissolve in the water and it's going to disappear. And when you do the second sample, none of them are going to be marked. You do not tie a lead weight around the neck of the fish. So when you throw it back, it goes gloop, 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 and sinks to the bottom and dies. Okay, so the moral of the story is the way in which you market has got to be chosen very carefully according to the organism that you are marking. It's not a one-size-fits-all because water paint might work for one kind of animal that doesn't live in water, but it won't work for one that does live in water. Okay. But there are rules to apply. The marking must not affect the animal. So consider the lead weight around the neck of the, of the fish. The mark must not wear off between samples. Consider the water paint on a fish. The individual must be able to mix with the rest of the population after sampling. So it's things like, um, you can't paint it bright neon green that all the other things afterwards are going to go, uh -huh, I, I'm having nothing to do with you. And they all go and swim to the other side of the pond and they leave neon green oak swimming around here on its own. Okay? So it must not prevent mixing with the population once the marking has happened. And that's also important to consider, you know how certain animals don't like the smell of a human on an animal if you've caught them? You always get told that a little bird, if it falls out of the nest, you've got to be careful because if you touch it, the parents won't accept it back. And that's because they don't like the smell of human hands on it. Okay. So you would have to take that into account. Mostly if you catch fish, then it's okay because you throw it back and the smell will wash off. Population must be closed and that means... No no breeding of other animals. No. 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 Immigration and immigration. Yes, no immigration or emigration and no births and no deaths. Okay? Should happen during this time. That's different from being closed, huh? Hey? So you do it carefully within a period of time, chosen carefully, or you do it in a particular season. So the majority of deaths happen in winter and the majority of births would happen in spring. So your best option is like late summer. Okay? I mean, one of the animals could still just die at that time. Not absolutely, but it's not ideal. Okay, so then ideally you should do it in a short enough period of time that you would limit the possibility of that happening. Okay. The chance of an animal being caught must not change as a result of age or experience during the investigation. And this is to do with things like, if you caught them in a trap for the first sample, or even one of the other repeats, you know how some animals will not go near that trap again because they know that that trap is actually what caught them last time. You've just got to be really careful. You need to take that into consideration. Okay, so these things are the proportions to take to ensure accuracy. This is equivalent to the random placing of a quadrat. Okay. All right, happy chickens. You know how to do this. Are we going through this again? Yeah. Okay. Can you please just, um, in the table, please just say the head, what the headings would be. Okay. So this is the number in sample one. Okay. This is the heat of sample two. 
This is the number in sample two. And this is the number marked in sample two. Okay, so you're going to have five figures here and an average, five figures there and an average, and then your number in sample one. Okay, guys, go around. Say again. No, no, you're not going to finish. Not going to finish. Life is too short to have breaks. Um, number in sample two. Okay, Chloe, you remember you're the child who's marked this thing. Your name on it. So when I get to my top, 10th of September, 2020, end of first 45 minute lesson. Cuts.